Welcome to Vigilant News for January 25th, 2022. I am Justin, founder of Stillness in the Storm, and I'm joined by my co-host, Ryan DeLarm, founder of Underground Newswire. Ryan, how are we doing today? I'm doing just swell. How are you, Justin? Pretty good. Got a lot of hot news for you today. First up on the docket, we'll be getting to the New York Supreme Court decision to uh, label mass mandates as unconstitutional. We have more from the Patriot Front, which was uh, basically like a false flag style group that came out uh, a few weeks ago. Um, and what their government ties are. We're going to get into uh, the VP of EcoHealth accusing Peter Daszak of being an, a CIA asset. Big news. Yeah, that's huge. We got Joe Biden, of course, or Joe Biden calling Jake Ducey a stupid son of a bee and related response. Um, we have a woman who stopped to help the monkeys that were um, in the CDC truck now started having major issues. So that's a little alarming. We might be having another pandemic 2.0 coming out here. We got a video of Klaus Schwab in 2017, essentially revealing how they infiltrate institutions and why that's so important. And we have Jan Paskey talking about the Russia instituting a false flag. We've got a bunch of other rapid fire news for you too. So before we get started, we have a uh, pine pollen. More pine pollen has been made available. We're going to be putting that out on the site. So check the links in the description for that. Um, we also still have a promotion for the uh, Orsamite disc. It's really awesome. Check that out. And I'm still doing Romello funding. So if you have a business, if you know somebody who has a business and they need funding of any type, they want to buy a new building, they want to grow, they need, they have some debts they're having trouble with, they're having payroll or cash flow problems, I can help. I want to support patriotic businesses. Get in touch with me at justin at romello.business. That's justin at romello.business. See the links in the description. All right, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into our first story today, which is, what do we got, Ryan? We got a New York State Supreme Court judge just dealing a huge blow to unconstitutional mask mandate. She declares it null, void, and unenforceable, which, wow. as far as I can tell, I've always thought that was true. Mm -hmm. You know, like, how are you going to stop everybody and make everybody wear a mask, especially if you're defunding yeah. the police? <laughs> no kidding. This is coming uh, out of 100% fed up. Uh, Patty McMurray up in Michigan. Big ups to Patty. Uh, it's been over two years since the start of the CCP virus pandemic in the United States. And New York is still one of the most locked down, cruel, and authoritarian cities in America. And remember, this is Patty's opinion. Mm -hmm. Segregation is all the rage in New York City, where vaccinated individuals, also known as super spreaders, are allowed to dine in restaurants while the unvaccinated are being told to get lost. This afternoon, New York's temporary governor, really, New York's temporary governor, Kathy Hoch Hochul, Hochul? 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 Yeah. who's adopted the same authoritarian tactics as her disgraced sexual predator predecessor, Andrew Cuomo, <laughs> Uh, just received some bad news about mask mandates in her state. State Supreme Court Judge Thomas Rademacher dealt a massive blow to New York Governor Kathy Hochul's mask mandates for schools and public spaces, calling it unconstitutional and declaring it null, void, and unenforceable. Mm. Uh, the National Review reports uh, Judge Thomas Rademacher found that the governor and the state health commissioner did not have the same, did not have the authority to enact a mask mandate without the state legislature, given that the governor no longer has emergency powers. Mm -hmm. The mask mandate has been in place since mid-December when the state saw a surge in the highly transmissible Omicron variant. There can be no question that every person in the state wishes, wants, and prays that this era of COVID ends soon, and they will surely do their part to see that that is accomplished, Rademacher wrote in his decision. However, enacting any laws to this end is entrusted solely to the state legislature. While the intentions of Commissioner Bassett and Governor Hochul uh, appear to be well-aimed squarely at doing what they believe is right to protect the citizens of the New York State, they must take their case to the state legislature. The ruling comes from a state Supreme Court based in Nass Nassau County, uh, which is a trial court. The New York Court of Appeals is akin to a more traditional Supreme Court in terms of authority in that it is the state's highest court. Wow. Yeah, so interesting. That was huge. It was in all the major uh, outlets this morning. We decided to talk to uh, use the 100% fed up link. Pretty cool. You'll be able to find it in the description. Absolutely. I mean, it's good news, of course. Nobody wants to continue this insane pandemic. However, I am skeptical because it seems like we have coordinated action happening. 
And uh, I saw a post put out on, uh, I think it was Gab yesterday about a guy saying, you know, we're, we're seeing the, the pulling away from encroachment, which we've talked about before in the show. So you're going to have the media, the court system, the judiciary starts to speak to the injustice and the tyranny of all this. And that's going to make people relax and be like, oh, finally, somebody's doing something about it, which is exactly the response the globalists want, because then we become complacent. And while we're all sitting there sipping margaritas, relaxing, because finally things are starting to slip up, they're pushing through different versions of things. So just make sure you never forget what they did to us. Yeah, exactly. So uh, something to rejoice about, but we're not out of the water yet. Um, all right, well, with that, let's go ahead and look at our next one, which is, uh, where is our next one here? Got so many today. Um, ah, yes, we got Joe Biden caught in the hot mic. So this is, you know, one, I'm sure everybody's seen it quite a bit at this point. But uh, if you haven't seen, there's actually a follow up to this that we're going to get into here as well. So of course, Joe Biden uh, at the press conference, the absolute train wreck of a press conference that happened recently, Peter uh, Ducey, the Ducey man, Deuce. from uh, <laughs> from Fox News, was asking him a question, and as they're filing out, uh, Mr. Biden had this to say. So let's take a listen. What do you think? President Biden, the That's a great asset. More inflation. What a stupid son of a bitch. <laughs> there's no making up, there's no denying what he said. I mean, let's just play that last one one more time. Son of a bitch. What a stupid son of a bitch. Right, there you have it. So <laughs> there's the, the diaper in chief himself saying, stupid son of a bitch. And now we have a follow up. So this is a segment. Peter Ducey on Hannity from last night. So let's take a listen. This one's a few minutes. Here with reaction, Fox News White House correspondent Peter Ducey has an update on the story. First, what was your reaction? Um, I, words don't matter to me. I remember during the Trump years, everybody would feign the vapors. Oh, the president said this. I think I know you pretty well. You have, you're, you're a pretty tough guy. What was your reaction initially when you heard what happened? Uh, my reaction, Sean, was delayed because, as you can see in that clip, the Biden staff were ushering us out. They were telling us, OK, thank you. Time to go. And you can see right there that people are just starting to move towards the door, myself included. It wasn't until we went to the basement and then outside and then back to the press room that somebody said, hey, did you hear what the president said about you? I said, no. What did he say? So he called you a stupid SOB. And I was thinking that I, I did not hear that. And I went downstairs and I uh, opened up my phone and uh, he did. And so I, my response is delayed. Uh, but, but Sean, and we have some news tonight. Uh, after years of clips of the president and I kind of mixing it up on the campaign trail and during the transition and here at the White House, uh, within about an hour of that exchange, he called my cell phone and uh, he said, it's nothing personal, pal. And we went back and forth and we were talking about uh, just kind of moving, moving forward. And I made sure to tell him that I'm always going to try to ask something different than what everybody else is asking. And uh, he said, you've got to. And that's a quote from the president. So I'll keep doing it. All right. Well, there you have it. It's funny because... <clears throat> Biden's whole thing was when he came into office is that there will be no bullying of the media. Mm. And now he has uh, called the mm. Ducey uh, son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it reminds me also, I mentioned this earlier today, it reminds me of when the Obamas were at the 9-11 memorial and you see Michelle Obama whisper, all this for a damn flag? And, uh, you know, Biden's like, yeah, isn't it so stupid? Americans are so dumb. You know, he doesn't say that, but you, you see something like that in his facial expression. So contempt by these leaders is a standard thing. This is one of the things that uh, we've heard from insiders and whistleblowers is that, you know, what you see, the Hillary Clintons, the Joe Bidens and things like this, they put a, a total facade and behind closed doors, they just have nothing but contempt and hatred and divisiveness for regular people. I doubt Trump would ever do something like that because he actually seems like a guy who cares to a certain extent. But we'll see. He's not afraid to say what he what he thinks. That's for sure. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
All right. Well, with that, let's get to our next story, which is... We have more on the government-sponsored Patriot Front showing more government ties. Uh, the Patriot Front, I don't know, maybe you saw our, we had a one of our mega streams where we showed clips of these guys uh, walking in D.C., mm -hmm. uh, all wearing, you know, matching outfits with upside-down American flags and expensive plastic shields, like, complete, covering their faces, wearing masks, wearing, mm -hmm. you know... Uh, it just reeks of uh, Fed trap to me. Mm -hmm. like, but anyway, let's let's get into what they're connected with. <clears throat> so we first saw this group of khakis and blue jackets in Washington, D.C. this past fall. Since then, they have shown up in Chicago and at the March for Life rally in D.C. Today, we have more on the Patriot Front, which looks like just another deep state government supported group. Uh, after looking at the individuals who attended the Patriot Front in Chicago, we were able to determine that this group was government sponsored. It was not just some ad hoc group that came out of nowhere. <clears throat> we released the following piece where we shared our observations. There's a link to it right there. Uh, one of our ob observations was that the group is more fit than groups like the KKK, for example. This upset the Patriot Front members, and we know this from <laughs> items we located that they shared with each other after our article was released. This is the Gateway Pundit, by the way. Uh, so we released a report yesterday on the Patriot Front with more information on its government ties. We identified the young founder of the group who happened to be in Charlottesville as well. Mm. And the, top of this, uh, the title of this headline is Patriot Front founder is a 23-year-old who walked in the Tiki Torch March in Charlottesville, which they also use as like a big event, you know, to smear all conservatives or anyone who is not, you know, far left, basically. That's right. We have now identified other individuals in the Patriot Front, one member by the name of James Julius Johnson, aka Tyler W.A., appears to be the subject matter expert on weapons and the fitness coordinator for the group. Hmm. This group has no patience for the overweight. Because they're all federal agents. Right. <laughs> uh, so then here's some images that you can peruse at your own uh, discretion another member we identified richard flannery was located in some some sort of patriot front marching exercise he appears to be from oregon mm. and then here's this guy this fella here another individual ian elliott is trained in martial arts and seems to be some sort of defense trainer for the group he also was identified marching in the front of this group carrying a captain america type shield you can see this guy here oh, yeah. Yeah. Like a, a tough character. What a jar head. I mean, they, they all seem like characters here. Yeah. Like, and that's exactly what they are. Below is a com composite with some of the pictures noted from above and more. And here, here's this whole thing that you can come find with the links in the description. That's right. It is a shame the US government doesn't take the time to arrest and indict bad guys and instead infiltrates and backs groups it can use to set up Americans, regular everyday Americans with crimes. And that's what this is all about. Right. Now, look at this group, you know, before we cut the uh, share screen, there's this image here, you know, it's, I'm assuming it's kind of a joke, but it's making a valid point, which is that, you know, when you have a, a fabricated event, the people that participate in fabricated events tend to be people who are fitter, you know, compare this some, to some of the people, to January 6th prisoners, you know, what is it, uh, Antifa? Antifa. Yeah, Antifa. Oh, Antifa. Yeah, Antifa. Yeah. <laughs> Let me see if I can pull it up actually. Aunt, Everybody loves this woman. Antifa. I don't know if this is going to pull her up here. We are Antifa. <laughs> it's like a whole thing about it already. Uh, yeah, they might not. Are you looking for that lady? I'm looking for the lady. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. yeah, yeah. Uh, I got it. Yeah, Antifa is like a, a play on. Um, Antifa, of course, but it, you know, I'm what I'm trying to show Meemaw. is <laughs> type in capital Mimon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old woman. Uh, what am I typing in? Captain. Oh, Captain. Uh, well, no, because I'm not seeing her. Okay, let's do. Why again. is she uh, disappearing here from the? They're scrubbing her from the internet. They're I getting know, rid right? of Antifa. <laughs> uh, uh, Let's see, this might pull it up. I won't spend too much time. Thanks for your patience, everybody. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is really important. So I wanted to, it. I mean, I've seen, I haven't seen all the video from January 6th, but I've seen enough to know that like 50% of the people there Here were hardly is. fit. There we go. Yeah, Grandma yeah, insurrectionist. Her. Okay. Yeah, 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 I just, that's what I think. Grandma insurrectionist. Yeah, forgive my crappy spelling. There you go. So the, these are the types of people that were 
at January 6th. Yeah, look at these yeah. domestic terrorists. Yeah, look at this there. this <laughs> mastermind right here. You know, I mean, who like, was led into the Capitol by the police and yeah. encouraged by the Oath Keepers, who are also another proxy group being used by the government to stir things up that day. Exactly. I mean, look at the two yokels behind her. I mean, these guys aren't bodybuilders. You know what I mean? I so like, I can't believe I'm in here. <laughs> exactly. So again, this meme is made as a kind of a joke, but it's speaking to a true thing. That you know, these there are subtle details. The devil's in the details, they like to say. So if you know how to see granularly, then you can often spot things pretty easily. So, uh, well, it's good to know people are doing their detective work on these kind of things. Um, Antif is uh, going to go down in history as one of the great heroes of our age, no doubt. Yeah, I'm going to get her tattooed on my forehead. <laughs> I love this um, all right, let's see. So next up on the docket, we have, oh, yes, the woman who stopped the uh for the truck so as, if you those of you who don't know this apparently yeah. the cdc was transporting uh, monkeys, monkeys that, that were used in all sorts of gain of function research at least that's what is currently being believed and a woman stopped to help him and now she's having issues so let's get into this is coming from the daily mail driver who stopped to help when truck carrying 100 lab monkeys crashed into pennsylvania and put her hand in one of the cages says she now has a cough and pink eye after one of the macaques hissed in her face. A woman who stopped to help the monkeys in a track, uh, truck cat crash is now feeling unwell. Michelle Fallon from Danville near Scranton was directly behind mm. the truck. Fallon said the day following the accident, she developed a cough and pink eye. She has, been a, she has begun a course of antiviral drugs and treatments to prevent rabies. The, the last of the four escaped monkeys was encountered for the late, can, accounted for by late Sunday, one of the Sigmalonius macaques, which are the one which are also known as crab eating or long tailed macaques, was found in a tree. Pennsylvania residents, residents have been warned not to engage a crab eating macaque that escaped from the truck carrying a hundred of them to the lab. So, you know, that this is the situation. This is this, uh, Michelle Fallon right here. I, I admire your dedication to go help these monkeys, but you know you might have just become a typhoid Mary, unfortunately. Yeah, you're like the new. It went from Wuhan wet market to the Scranton monkey fiasco. <laughs> you know, interestingly enough, supposedly Scranton is where Biden's from. So, you know, isn't that the, interesting? Uh, the hit show, The Office, also takes place there. Right now, apparently, a lot of these monkeys have been euthanized already, and the concern is that. Um, uh, you know, there might be some other pandemic shenanigans happening. I don't necessarily know, but, you know, we're, we're dealing with globalists here. We're dealing with people that have no problem doing all sorts of shady things. So it's entirely possible this might itself be another pretext for things or completely unrelated. I so. mean, my first thought when I had heard before this woman came along and the first bit of news that came out was that there was a CDC truck that was in a collision and some monkeys got away mm. and that they had found them all but one. There was one lone monkey out in the wilderness. And I was like, this feels like it could be the start of a narrative. I mean, my, oh, right, my, right, right. my imagination goes a little crazy sometimes. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking this is like, you know, the movie, what was it, Outbreak, <laughs> like actually happening in, right. our, in our world. And then two days later this article comes out and it's just like woo, that was weird you know mm -hmm. but you know it could just fizzle out to nothing or it could be the next big like nipa outbreak and everyone's gonna die because their immune system's compromised i don't know exactly. i'm just I, i'm being a little you know. it's yeah who knows then these guys would do all sorts of things so um all right well with that let's get to our next uh story which is uh gain of function researcher peter dashik so if you listen to us every night we talked about him and eco health last night uh, well, now uh, Peter Daszak is being accused of being a CIA asset and EcoHealth Alliance is being described as a front for the agency. Wow. This is coming from uh, Dr. Andrew Huff, the vice president of EcoHealth Alliance. So it's not just like some Huge. asshole on Twitter, yeah. you know, saying, giving his uh, opinion. This is coming from the vice president of the, of the uh, nonprofit, I think it is. Um, he's claiming that the firm's president, Dr. Peter Daszak, who helped fund dangerous gain-of-function research at China's Wuhan Institute of Virology, told him that he works for the Central Intelligence Agency and that the company is essentially a front for the CIA. Wow. Uh, according to a report detailed on Substack by independent journalists called Kanakoa, some of you might be familiar with, Huff earned his PhD in environmental health with a specialty in emerging diseases before he became an associate vice president of EcoHealth Alliance. 
While working for the firm, he says he was tasked with finding novel methods of biosurveillance, data analytics, and visualization for disease detection. Mm. The company, which is led by Dashik, receives funding from a, new, a number of U.S. government agencies, including the National Institutes of Health and the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Disease, uh, which is led by Joe Biden's chief medical advisor, Dr. Fauci. Bada boom. EcoHealth Alliance, Kenicoa notes, partnered with Dr. Ralph Barrick of the U- University of North Carolina, as well as Dr. Shi Zhengli. Mm. of the Wuhan Institute of Virology, something we also mentioned last night, yeah. uh, uh, to conduct gain-of-function research on bat-borne viruses found in China before the COVID-19 pandemic initially began. The report said that Dashik led the screening of thousands of bat samples for novel coronaviruses, which also involved screening people who work with live animals. These new revelations add to the growing body of evidence that COVID-19 was created at the Wuhan lab and either escaped somehow or was developed as a bioweapon and intentionally released, which I would say is probably more likely Mm -hmm. given how many people are profiting off of it, how everything has played out since. Uh, Likely to occupy then-President Donald Trump with something other than continuing to punish China with tariffs in a bid to level the playing field when it came to bilateral trade and to, to... to go off that point, uh, if you remember, Trump was like really kind of giving it to him. I mean, they were giving it back, but as soon as the pandemic came out, it was like, now the pandemic is the president, basically. <laughs> like, right. like everything kind of halted. And uh, yeah, we went just into pandemic mode. So, but Dashik, of course, vehemently denies that's where COVID came from or that he was involved in gain of function research, which we now know is he was because of the emails. Right. In a Twitter thread posted earlier this month, Huff, the vice president of EcoHealth Alliance, noted, for the record, in 2015, Dr. Peter Daszak stopped me as we were leaving work late at night and asked me if he should work with the CIA. I was shocked given my experience in security. Over the next two months, he gave me updates on three separate occasions about his work with the CIA. Wow, so he literally admitted it. Yeah, and this is a Twitter post by okay. the vice president. When he asked me the question i stated peter it never hurts to talk with them and there could potentially be money in it meanwhile i was cringing that he, that he told me this in a non-classified setting a scif uh, to a person that was not read in and to an uncleared person me then over the next two months at the break area while getting coffee or between meetings he stated that they were interested in the places that we were working the people involved, the data that we were collecting in the work and that the work with them was proceeding. He then said that he believes EcoHealth Alliance is actually a CIA front organization that was being utilized for intelligence gathering by the US government. Now, this is, again, this is coming from the, the vice president of the nonprofit that they're saying is a CIA front organization. Right. So that's- it's not like the guy working in the mail room, right? Now. Right. Looking back, I now believe that Echo Health Alliance was a CIA front organization to collect viral samples and to collect intelligence on foreign laboratory capacity. There was no way that all the data collected or the models being developed could predict transmission or pandemics. Mm -hmm. Contextually, EcoHealth was barely solvent and it was commonplace to lay off employees with the ebb and flow of federal and private funding. Peter would do anything or say anything to obtain funding. Intelligence organizations often target people in financial distress. Mm -hmm. Continuing, Huff said that he initially had doubts about Dash's claims, but later came to accept them as fact. From the CIA's perspective, it was a great plan, in my opinion. If what Dr. Peter Dashik said was true, since it was commonplace for Peter to lie, I didn't necessarily believe him when he told me. However, Based on the past two months of the U.S. government spending millions of dollars surveilling me, MTRX Inc. employees, including military aircraft, attempting to destroy my house, bugging everything in it, stealing my property, and hacking all of my devices, I believe that the worst is likely true. Mm. He also later noted that the government hacked him, stole his property, and installed electronic surveillance devices throughout his home. And you can see a tweet here. Uh, where he's this is the guy dr andrew huff vice president of equal health alliance claiming all of this and adding joe rogan <laughs> right yeah <laughs> Joe Rogan, like awesome. please help please <laughs> and this was just uh, a little more than 10 days ago so wow well it's surprising that we haven't seen this posted on our news services that we look through um but you know natural news picked it up so 
it's a bombshell. I mean, Canico the Great. He does a lot of good work. Yeah, great stuff. He's got a great Rumble channel. So, um, yeah, I have no doubt that this is going to probably gain more prominence as time goes on. And if what he's saying is true, and there's actually some evidence to back it up, then this could be one of the major links that finally get establishes more credibility for the pandemic, you know, narrative. So um, that by that I mean that the COVID nineteen was orchestrated. Event two hundred one, Bill Gates, Schwab was all to bring about the Great Reset, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, when you hear the term deep state, really to me that just means CIA and the intelligence agencies of the world and the people that they work with in politics basically it's that easy right yep it's so true all right well next we got uh, a couple clips i'm going to show you here and then we're going to get it some rapid fire so i'm going to go through these somewhat quickly so first clip comes from klaus schwab so i'm going to play it and then we're going to have a little discussion to say um when I mention our names, like Mrs. Merkel, um, even uh, Vladimir Putin, and so on, they all have been young global leaders of the World Economic Forum. Mm -hmm. But um, what we are very proud of now is the young generation, like uh, Prime Minister Trudeau, uh, President of, of uh, Argentina, and so on, so we penetrate the cabinets. So yesterday I was at a, at a reception for Prime Minister Trudeau, and I would know that half of this cabinet, or even more half of uh, half of this cabinet, are for our actually young global leaders of the world. Right. And that's true in Argentina too. Wow. Yeah. Sorry. That's true in Argentina as well. It's true in Argentina and uh, it's true in France now. Mm -hmm. I'm with the president, who is a young global leader. But what is important from? Okay. Wow. So basically, the World Economic Forum is the modern incarnation of the Council on Foreign Relations. Pretty much, exactly. And what he's suggesting here, and this is something that uh, this is a very old technique, Machiavellian stuff that was happening back in the Venetian period. Um, it happened with the Sabbateans, it happened with the Frankists, it happened with the uh, communists and the French Revolution. This is a very old technique. The technique is you've got, you know, you're a globalist. You want to make sure that your enemies get destroyed. While it's often fighting people directly, like having open warfare isn't necessarily a guarantee that your agenda is going to succeed. A much better way to go about it is infiltration. And the beauty about infiltration is that you get to keep all of the investment of the people in the nation in that institution because they don't necessarily have the eyes and ears to see what's happening with the institution. So what you do is you create a bunch of global thought leaders, that's the term he used, influential uh, luminaries, uh, writers, you know, all these kind of things. And then you position those people in these institutions. And then slowly across time, they start to, you know, go into the institution. So I'm going to uh, say something like um, the university, something that's happened to the universities over the past 30 years, it's a little more easy for people to, to, to identify. So the universities, they have these humanities departments. You got professors and um, assistant professors coming in. They're just echoing what, the, what is currently in the, the culture at the time. But then as they start to fill out the ranks of the institution, then they activate the part that uh, starts to change it slowly from within. So you know this whole critical race theory thing, it didn't just come out here overnight. The people that are pushing critical race theory have been in these institution positions since like the 90s and 80s in some cases, but they got activated, I would argue, in the sense that they, once they were in and they were entrenched in the institution, then they started to slowly reveal the agenda and carefully through very uh, effective and well-calculated means, twist the values, the ideals, and the means and methods of the institution. And before you know it, you've got universities pushing, you know, effectively white racism and critical race theory. So Schwab just admitted it. He calls it global, what do you call it? Global thought leaders? Young global leaders, but there's young. also the global thought leaders. Uh, the, the, the young thought leaders, I think, is like a conservative movement. But mm -hmm. then there's the global, the young global leaders like Dan Crenshaw and Maria Bartiromo and uh, Tulsi yes. Gabbard. Is supposed yeah, to yeah. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean that anybody who goes into an institution who maybe was groomed in some way is bad. 
You have to, this is a case by case substance thing. So you can't just whitewash and paint people with the same brush. Yeah, it's, it's, it's reasonable to be suspicious, but also just like judge someone based on their actions. So you mentioned Macron, uh, uh, the prime minister of, of Canada. What's his face? Uh, Trudeau. Trudeau, the guy who's supposedly Fidel Castro's son. They are professionals. Remember what the, uh, I think it was one of the founders of the Jesuits who talked about give me a child until he's seven and I'll have him for life kind of thing. I mean, these guys are professionals at creating agents and then distributing them into society. So keep that in mind. All right, well, with the next one, we're gonna play another clip uh, of something interesting. Let me just pull that up here. And this is coming from Pas uh, Pasky? Saki. Saki, thank you. I keep mispronouncing it. Paseki. Paseki. That's how some people pronounce So this is coming from Paseki. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's just listen. The clip will speak for itself. Uh, Ukraine's government is telling its people that a Russian invasion is not imminent. Their defense minister said, don't worry, sleep well, no need to have your bags packed. Does the U.S. agree with that assessment that an invasion is not imminent? Well, no one can get into the mind of President Putin uh, or Russian leadership. Uh, we all know that is the case. What we have seen is a range of preparations, including 100,000 troops at the border, bellicose rhetoric, and actions, as we've talked about in here, including fl false flag operations to try to spread misinformation uh, throughout uh, the region and even the world. Uh, setting up the predicate for an invasion. Uh, so while, of course, our preferred path is diplomacy and we can't predict where the mind of President Putin is, we've certainly seen aggressive actions and preparations increasing at the border. And that is what Obama told me to say. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, there's that clip of her, like, uh, accidentally saying that she's going to miss Obama. A little Freudian slip. Yeah, so, you know, keep in mind, everybody, that the mention of false flag on social media might get your account terminated and closed because that this is supposedly a taboo word. We can't even consider the idea that our government or anyone else would commit a false flag attack. But these things happen. And the Gulf of Tonkin is one of the best examples. The thing that got us into the Vietnam War was a false flag. The military claimed that one of the ships was supposedly shooting um, uh, one of the battleships in the Gulf, and that wasn't happening. And yeah, we invited. Yeah, and supposedly the sinking of the Lusitania in World War One. Yeah. Uh, you know, Pearl Harbor. I mean, it happened, but it was also kind of encouraged and let happen right. intentionally. So exactly, like exactly. So now we have the the media coming out and saying that um, you know false flags are going to be happening on the other end. Now I'm curious, what do they actually mean? When she says that this is happening, is there an example? Can you give us details? Because they have a feeling they're just throwing this word around because they want to just create a new type of, uh, we might think of like a hypnotic cipher for people to hear that and be like, oh, she must be talking about Trump and Russiagate, you know, stuff like that. So quite interesting. Okay, so let's get into some rapid fire. Uh, what do you got for us? <clears throat> well, in New Hampshire, uh, they are seeking to make ivermectin available as an alternative COVID treatment. Uh, they're getting some pushback, but that's, you know, happening nonetheless. Fantastic. We had NBA icon John Stockton. Uh, he's linking all the vax deaths of 100 pro athletes, despite being canceled by alma mater. Uh, and then we had 50,000 truckers heading towards Ottawa to demand an end to COVID mandates up in Canada, wow. which is huge. That is huge. 50,000. That yeah. is a lot of truckers. Imagine seeing that. Yeah, I think I saw a video shared somewhere, maybe it was uh, one of the Telegram groups, and it was literally like an hour and a half long of a woman just sitting there like with her cell phone recording these trucks as they're driving by. Wow. Yeah, it's a massive caravan. So. Mandate freedom, baby. Oh yeah, I like that freedom convoy. The freedom is being uh, is a popular thing to gather about. I like that. All right, for me, I got Biden's lawless White House Energy Secretary Grand Holm with Fails to report two hundred and forty thousand dollars worth of stock trades for months. Interesting timing. Yeah, especially given how much we've been covering this whole Pelosi stock insider trading thing. I mean, you know, the these cabal assets, these agents, they take every advantage they can with respect to using their power and influence to make money. So, here's a little bit of an example. And lastly, we have undercut and stu undercover student exposes Colorado high school vaccine clinic for administering vaccinations without parental consent even after school superintendent assured this would not happen. Jeez. Yeah, so this is, th this is one of these things that I think 
makes it very uh, obvious that we need to be very careful about trusting our educational institutions because our educational institutions have been used since the Prussian era, this so was in the late 1800s, to essentially indoctrinate people into mass mind control type of events. If you want to look at a, a really great documentary, see The Century of Self. It's like a four hour, four part series on propaganda and things like this, and it gets into a little bit of that. Um, all right, well, that's all we have for you today. Don't forget to check the promotion. Pine Pollen's coming out. We got some interviews coming up here. Um, also, don't forget to check the links in the description for Vigilant News Telegram group and, of course, stillnessinthestorm.com forward slash donate, where you can go to support our work. With that, we'll see you next time. Take care. <laughs>